Let me record. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let oh, me thank record. God you weren't recording the other stuff. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, put in stuff about, oh, here comes George. <laughs> I just see this guy with this tape measure, like, coming across. Oh, my life. Why is this my life? Like, it's so awkward all the time. Okay. Um, so I'm Carrie. But, I'm married. I got on, two on, beautiful on, children. On. Where am I supposed to start? Let me say hello to you first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unrecord that. Start again. Jesus. This is wonderful. All right. <laughs> Edit it all out. Start now. Sorry. Take hello. Out. Hello. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> Hi. I am thrilled to have you on again. I'm equally as excited to be here. Yes. Back on. And I'm hoping this will like maybe bring you back so that we can do I this. know. We can know. have like the true Mom Anxiety Club team for the podcast. I know. Please. I know. Tell us about yourself because everyone's going to love you more than they love me. So go. <laughs> oh, stop it. You're the best. Um, Okay, so um, just looking at this guy outside. Um, I am married. I live in Pittsburgh. I'm from Pittsburgh. Um, Tori and I met when I lived in Harrisburg for four years, um, but we moved back to Pittsburgh because I said, hubby, if you want to have more kids, let's head on back to Pittsburgh. Um, and amazingly, probably a week after we moved into the house, we got pregnant with um, our second little guy. So um, I have a daughter, Evelyn, she's four, and I have a uh, son. He is going to be 20 months here pretty soon, so a year and a half, um, and he is just, whoo, he's a lot. <laughs> I thought my daughter was busy, and he is very busy. Um, so yeah, we've been back here in Pittsburgh for two, a little over two years, Um it's, it's weird seeing a guy outside my house. Um, but you know, life just happens while you're trying to do other stuff. <laughs> weird. Um, and he's making eye contact with me. I'm sorry. It's very <laughs> odd. Um, okay. So, uh, I always like to say to people that I, um, came out of the womb anxious. I come from a long line of anxious people. Um, it goes back generations, um, uh, more so on my mother's side. Love you, mom. Um, so I've always been anxious and, um, you know, I was the little kid with the stomach ache. I was, you know, I was the super anxious before tests in college. Um, even though I ended up getting A's, like I would freak out, like I'm going to fail it, you know? So definite like type A crazy lady. Um, but in a good way. Um, I think a lot of my anxiety, I tried to cover up mostly with like my humor. I think, um, my sarcasm and stuff has come out of somewhat of a coping mechanism, but also just my all around fabulousness. So it is, um, it is wonderful. You are the life of the party, the life of the room, <laughs> but it's, it's so, great. Because everybody relates to it. Like when we first met yeah. in classes every single mom was like yes just because you would say something nobody else wanted to say it and they were like yeah oh, yeah me too <laughs> and then I get in the car after and I'm like yep just word vomited the entire class but there we go <laughs> haven't been kicked out yet um and yeah um your class was probably one of the best things that helped me to realize like how anxious I was, how much more anxious I became postpartum. Mm -hmm. So I had, um, so I had Evelyn while we were living in Harrisburg. So I was away from family. Um, I was four hours away from my family and about an hour and a half from my husband's family. Um, and very much, I have been the, I'll do it myself person. Like, don't ask for help. I'll help you. Do you need help? Are you okay? Right. Meanwhile, like, I mean, that's like anxiety over-functioning right to a T. hundred percent. So I was very much like, 
so do you need some help? Let me carry that. And meanwhile, I'm carrying like three tons of stuff, <laughs> but I've got the arm. Give me that. I'll, I'll take it. You look like you're tired. Um, so I had Evelyn in 2016. Um, she, she was a fast and somewhat traumatic birth. Um, so she came very fast. Um, my water broke at home and I had her eight hours later um, at the hospital. So she came hard and fast, no epidural, um, pretty traumatic. I didn't have a physician in with me. I had a midwife. Um, I had never met her before. We did not vibe. I did not like her. Oh, no. Um, she was not at all helpful. Um, luckily I had my mom in with me and my husband, God bless my husband. I um, removed one of his kidneys while I was pushing. So <laughs> he only has one kidney left, but that man, he did it. Um, my mom was, was the calm that I needed during, um, the birth, but it was very, uh, intense. And then, um, they are a baby friendly hospital. And I don't know how much you've talked about that on here, I but not talked about it at all. Okay. But, um, to moms, I didn't even know what was baby friendly versus mom friendly. Right. Baby friendly is basically F you moms, this, your kid, you now, you now have it 24 <laughs> seven. Um, and I know that's not really how it works, but for me, that's what it felt like. So I, um, you know, very quickly gave birth. They, I gave birth during a full moon too. So all the rooms were full. Um, <laughs> everyone was giving birth. <laughs> so they quickly like wrapped it up. I was out of that birthing room in an hour and I was up in my room and like what like totally shell-shocked really right and I think because we were older and also my husband I think some of the new nurses knew my husband because he he works in healthcare, and they were just like oh they got it and I was mm -hmm. just like I ain't got I don't have it I don't, I don't have it at all and I'm like trying to figure out breastfeeding and if that's going to work for me and if it's not, and am I doing it right? And we kept asking for the lactation consultant and we kept asking and asking and asking. And traditionally you don't see it until you leave. Right. Which also makes no sense makes to me. No sense. Um, yeah. So I had really no, I had a couple nurses that I was like, am I doing this right? And the one's like, let me help you. And I really only had one that helped. And Ev, she cried. Con I mean, she just, she just wouldn't settle. And the thing was, is I was not good at breastfeeding and my body was not good at figuring out breastfeeding. And she lost weight considerably. And long story short, uh, I'm just not capable of breastfeeding. Um, and I tried the like formula through, uh, through, oh, uh, yeah, the I don't know what that's called. Supplement oh my God. Time. Yeah. So I was doing that and trying to, and breastfeeding constantly and pumping and, and that, that right there was, was definitely the tipping point to my postpartum anxiety going completely out of control. Mm -hmm. I felt so alone. I felt so out of control and I felt like such a failure. So it was all of that at once. And the whole process, I no longer enjoyed this newborn because I was so stressed out about the breastfeeding and the, is she gaining right, weight? Is she doing that? this? And I, and I remember going to a new mom's group. She wasn't even two weeks old and I had already had mastitis. Okay. She was still losing weight. And I went and they're like, they they can't believe that I'm at this new mom's group with not even a two week old, but I came to weigh her because I was so stressed out about mm -hmm. her weight that I was like, I got to go to this new mom's group and like weigh her and see if she's gaining weight. That and then all these, why I took Ruben the first time too. Like, you know, a, isn't that yeah. insane? Yeah. Like it's not, I need support and I want to see other moms. It's like, I'm so stressed out about this baby gaining weight that I'm, I got to go to this scale. Mm -hmm. So everybody in this mom's group, and you know, it's amplified when you're stressed out, you know, but at the time I'm sitting there and everyone else is breastfeeding, just boobs out, 
babies nursing, everybody. So it's just this amazing, beautiful, like chit chatting and breastfeeding. And I'm sitting there and I'm holding a bottle and I just burst into tears and every, you know, everyone's so supportive and the nurse that ran it, oh, she's amazing. And I just like, that was the lowest of low, like failure, you know, Mm -hmm. and no one else was saying it to me. Like my husband was saying like, do what you need to do. Like I was a formula baby. I'm okay. I went back. The first lactation consultant I saw was not good. Um, She was very not like the warm fuzzy you need. Then I went back and this older woman, thank God, the other one was at a conference. We had the exact and the same other- experience because I know who you're talking about. And I had that exact right? thing. She had to leave the room because I was sobbing. I was yeah. sobbing yeah. during our thing. And, they, and the older one actually lives near us and is- Really? She she's an our- angel. <laughs> she came and did like a visit at our house. She is amazing. Yeah. She's an she's an angel. And I remember I went in cause we had to go back to the hospital to weigh Ev. And I remember her saying like, just feed them. It's fine. She's mm-hmm. like, I was a, I was a formula baby. Just feed them. She's like, it doesn't matter. And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, you, there's people that kind of come into your life when they're, when right. they're supposed to, to help you along the way. So that lactation consultant, I think really saved all of us in that moment. And she doesn't even know it. She's just doing her job. So I had probably three or four panic attacks, like major panic attacks in the first like two weeks of Evelyn's life, like cannot breathe, like losing my mind, freak outs. Um, And that was while my mom was still staying with us. Then my mom goes back to Pittsburgh and I'm alone with this baby. And my husband's working 12, 14 hour days in a row. So I am legitimately alone, me and this baby. And I'm like, what? Um, what? She's, we're all still alive. So we did it. Go us. <laughs> um, she, she was colicky. Um, but now in hindsight with Sawyer, she was not that bad. Um, she got on some reflux meds and she really she, she's a good baby, um, high energy, but like, whatever. Um, so I got on, um, six weeks post, you know, you do your six weeks postpartum. I can barely stand for more than like two minutes. I had an episiotomy. Things were not, uh, things were not good. (laughs) Um, so I, I really, I could not stand and I go to my six week follow up and he's like, good to go. And I was like, no, sir, we are not good to go. Um, you tell my husband that, and I will murder both of you. (laughs) So, um, God bless my husband yet again. He was, you know, he understood, like he understood how traumatic it was, how much kind of damage was done. Um, but I also, you know, they give you that assessment of like how you feeling. And it was like, not feeling great. And he's like, we'll put you on Zoloft. And I was like, okay, let's take some Zoloft. Like I'm not, you know, I've taken anti-anxiety depression meds before Mm -hmm. I'm a trained therapist. I'm, I'm fine with all of that. Like, give it, give it to me. Let's do it. So started Zoloft. It helped whenever, um, no one asked again, (laughs) you know, it's like nobody asked ever again. Like, right. And you fill out the form at the pediatrician's office and it is means nothing. Like they don't even look at it. Means nothing. Means nothing. So um, I took Zoloft probably up until she was one. And then I got, I was able to work out a lot again. I started running again. Um, You know, I made some really good mom friends and I was able to get off the Zoloft and just kind of manage. And um, what I realized was I really wasn't managing, um, but you know, we were all just trudging along. Um, but I was just, I mean, the most rageful, angry, yelling, like difficult to be around, Mm -hmm. you know, in hindsight, you're like, God, I was just awful, but every little thing set me off. Right. And I was so stressed out about this, about thing and the feeding and the bedtimes. And I would lose my mind if we were just an inch off of that. Right. And who, and who ended up getting the brunt of that? My husband, God bless him. 
again, he should be up for sainthood, <laughs> that man. Um, so I would take it out on him and, you know, he would have, he would have a long day and then mm -hmm. come home. And sometimes he wouldn't even get to see Ev right. before she was in bed. And then I just unload on him when he came home and he's just like deer in headlights. Um, so also part of moving back home was to get a little bit more support for me because I was like, I can't continue to live in this like fight or flight state. I just wasn't, wasn't happy. So we come back to Pittsburgh, um, get pregnant. Um, and I'm not a, I'm not a, I enjoy being pregnant person. Um, I get sick, I get moody. Uh, I don't, I'm not glowing at all. I'm more of like an ashy, like looks like I'm going to vomit kind of like green, <laughs> which is pretty good. Um, you know, thing. um, so that, and then I have Evie and our house that we moved into. So I have a toddler in our house that we moved into, um, everything just decides to break, um, at once. So I'm like coordinating new furnaces, new, um, dishwasher, new everything. So mm -hmm. I have the stress of the house, husband starting a new job. Um, I have a toddler, I'm pregnant bleh, and I'm old, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm now considered, I'm now considered an elderly mother, right? <laughs> Yet again, I'm elderly mother coming through, watch out everybody, grandma's coming in. So, um, so I have to find a new gynecologist, obstetrician, like right off the, so I find a good group, um, blah, 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 everything's fine. Um, you know, Sawyer was growing, doing good. Um, right around 20 weeks, he started to like plateau. He wasn't gaining weight. So, um, that became the focus of my worry. So he wasn't gaining weight, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I was, ow, 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 ow. I was eating. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. It must've been my, my elderly, um, placenta just wasn't, you know, the cobwebs were on it. <laughs> so, um, I started Zoloft again while I was pregnant, probably at pregnant because I knew like shit's going to hit the fan again, pardon my language. And, um, and what I need you, to get, you cut out. You said you started Zoloft oh, at like 20 weeks. At like, um, I guess seven months. So I don't know how many weeks that is, but like two, two months before I gave birth. So, um, it can, he continued not to gain weight. I continued to stress out about it. The Zoloft took the edge off a little bit, but you know, I was still kind of a rage monster. So, um, we, Sawyer came a week early, exactly a week early. He, um, is a star Wars baby, which is amazing. So, um, we sat in triage on May the 4th and we watched star Wars movies for seven hours because there weren't any birthing suites available and now the hospital here has like 21 birthing suites they were all full when we showed up and it was the weekend of the marathon the pittsburgh marathon so <laughs> that weekend all the roads around the hospital were closed like you had to get in at a certain point or you just didn't get in oh my god because we're closed for the race so anyways we're sitting in triage we're watching Star Wars. Luckily, Sawyer decided, like, I'm in no rush. Thank God, because okay. they say your second baby, like, they go, they come faster. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty chill. Like, we were just hanging out, watching Star Wars. Um, Nick had a cold. My husband had a cold, so he had a mask on the whole time, <laughs> and because um, he was trying, you know, not to get anyone else sick, which is we all know how that is now, 2020. Right. So we um, finally, after seven hours, they get us back into a suite and they give me Pitocin and who man, does that like, okay, we're doing it now. Yeah. Like immediately that is, that is a instant, uh, whoo, you start breathing hard. So I'm progressing. I'm like, why well, gave birth to Evie unmedicated? Let's see if I can, you know, give birth to this one unmedicated. <laughs> Cause, because my type A, like I can, I can do this. I was like, I'm, right. I'm going to do this one unmedicated too. Yeah. We flip flop. No, no. where Did I do like everything exactly the same experience with the first child, the anxiety, the second child, the pregnancy, the moving, yeah. all that stuff. But yes, Ruben was induced Pitocin. I tapped out and, but Eli yeah. 
fast and furious there was no <laughs> no <laughs> no option <laughs> yeah yeah isn't that weird yeah so weird so we're in such a small place um so I got to about five centimeters I guess five almost six and I was starting to get tired um and I remember how tired I was with Evie and I'm like, I don't know, like, can I push through? And my husband's like, whatever you want to do, like, it, that's, that's on you. Like, I'll support you either way. God bless that man. Um, everybody watching the podcast, whenever I say, God bless that man, take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. Is it? <laughs> Listening around. People. Take a shot of coffee. Them. Yeah, coffee. Take a shot. Um, so finally, I was like, you know what, like, I'm, I'm going to get the epidural. And I was like, I can, you know, it'll be a minute before I get it. And I tell the nurse, I'm like, Hey, I want the epidural. Here comes the anesthesiologist, like immediately. And I was like, well, hello. And, um, she was awesome. She did such a great job and, you know, just getting through the contractions while they're giving you the epidural and Mm -hmm. jamming it into your back is, you know, that takes a little bit of breathing, but got through that. And then the calm that washes over your body and the relaxing that happens when all that pain goes away is amazing. And I would say probably 20 minutes after the epidural, three times and Sawyer was out. Like, and I talked to the, I made sure to be my own advocate because I raised with Evie, I did not advocate for myself at all. I just said, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And I just have to be okay with it. And then I realized with Sawyer, like I needed to advocate. I needed to say, this is what I need. This is what I want. And you're going to do it. Um, But I did it in a nice way. Um, So yeah, I told, it's the hardest part, especially when you're in pain and you're anxious and it's just, it's, it's a lot. It's, Mm -hmm. it's being a mom is a lot from start to finish. So um he, so I told the, the OB, I said, look, you know, I had a very kind of traumatic birth with the, with the first one. She's like, I see your scar. Like it's, it's intense. Um, you know, she's like, well, with the epidural, we can move a little bit slower. I can try and stretch some. And I was like, that sounds great. Just do it and don't tell me. Um, so yeah, like three pushes and he was out and I remember like laughing when he came out because I was just like, well, that was a whole lot easier um, and a whole lot more enjoyable. And I just remember, and this is the weird part, was pure elation seeing him, but also guilt because I was so stressed out when they gave me Evie and when I had Evie that I didn't enjoy it. And I was just like, in, I was like, I was deer in headlights when they, when I had Evie, because it was just so, I was uninformed. No one was kind of, I was just, I, it was almost an out of body experience because it just kind of happened to me instead of being an active part in it. Mm -hmm. And with Sawyer, I very much was an active part. And when they handed me him, I was just like, completely in love instead of completely overwhelmed. And I'm not sure if that has to do with first versus second, or if it also has to do with medication, advocating, you know, the, the hospital, because the second hospital I gave birth at was mom friendly, Hmm. which was amazing. Yeah. So, um, we stayed in that birthing suite for two hours after he was born Like we had, we ate dinner in there. We snuggled with him. And I immediately said, he's a formula baby. So I did um, do some of the colostrum right at first, um, just, you know, because I see the benefit in that and a little bit of bonding. And, um, you know, I had to grieve the loss of not being able to breastfeed, but it's just not in the cards for me. And that's fine. He looks like any other kid. He doesn't have three heads and he's perfectly fine. Um, maybe a little bit too smart for his own good. Um, (laughs) So we had this like this golden hour as they call it to just chill. It was so nice. And then we went up to the room. It was like 10 o'clock at night and it was just quiet and calm. And they like soundproof the rooms. And I remember at the hospital in Harrisburg, it was so loud. It was just babies screaming all the time. And that in and of itself is going to send you into a, into a space. 
So this other hospital was just so calm and so quiet and everyone was just so pleasant. <laughs> and the second, and because Nick, because my husband had a cold, I said, you need to just go home, sleep, feel better. You know, the nurses, I've got the nurses, like, this is your chance to, because once we come home, you in it, son, like you getting up. Um, <laughs> so he, he went home the first night, um, Sawyer and I, we, I mean, it was like 10 o'clock at night. So we just kind of hung out together. Um, and he, you know, right after they're born, they're so tired and whatever, like they're just going to sleep. So he just slept a and he was on formula. So he was just like, mm, like all snuggled up, wrapped up, <laughs> fed, like he was happy. And I was like, this is amazing. I'm enjoying this. Um, and the next day, like I took a shower and I took care of myself and I ate and I focused on me. Like I still very much took care of that baby, but I also realized how important it was for me to take of me. Right. And that second night I said, take, can you take him to the nursery so I can get some sleep? And they're like, absolutely. I remember the one nurse said, I had two girls. And if I had a boy, I was going to name him Sawyer. I'll be so happy to snuggle him all night. And so they took him because again, he formula fed. So didn't really me at that right. point. And they took him and I didn't put on an eye mask and I put ear, um, ear plugs in and oh, I died and it was amazing. <laughs> like I, I woke up at 3 a.m. and I was like, have I slept for days? Like it was oh, amazing. Wow. And I called the nurse station and I was like, hey, I'm wide awake. You can bring him back if you want. And she's like, okay, we'll bring him down. Because I, I had gotten such good sleep that I was like, I could have ran a marathon right out of that, like right out of that bed. I was <laughs> mm, so good. Um, and it was just such a different experience. So when I came home, I was in a better space, but fast forward, the Zoloft really wasn't managing my anxiety. So we'll skip forward a lot. Um, he, Sawyer became, he was a very colicky baby. So from 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. every night screamed straight. Oh my gosh. It was clockwork. He started at three. He ended at 10. That's a long time with a screaming baby and a toddler on top of that. Oh yeah. And that was, that was a lot. That'll set, that'll set anybody off. I don't care how calm you are. That's going to set anybody off. That sounds so, just like give um, me somebody else in the, in the group too. Who's yes. Having the toddler and the baby just screaming. Yeah. It's, it's, and the toddler wants your attention. So they're going to scream because they think, oh, if I scream, this is how I get attention. And then you just get annoyed with the toddler and then you feel bad about that. And then you're right. sleep deprived and, and blah, 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 blah. It's too much. It's too much. Moms are, are angels on earth and it's too much, but we do it. So I got through that and um, I had to get a new PCP. My OB said, we'll no longer manage your um, SSRI. So you need to find a, a primary care. Luckily, um, the it was a physician's assistant I saw and I actually really like her. I just continue to see her now. Um, she had recommended um, a DO um, to see for my, for my primary care physician. And she's very close to my house, which is nice. So I went to see her and, you know, when you just click with somebody and mm -hmm. she just, I just felt like she put out a very safe space. She listened, she understood. She was a mom of a little kid. Um, I had to bring Sawyer with me to one appointment and he just tired time. And she's like, I see what's, what's happening here. That's a lot. Um, so we upped the Zoloft. Um, she, she, um, Represcribed my Ativan, which is for like panic attacks and stuff like that, that I take very sparingly. Um, and, you know, that helped. That kind of brought me to somewhat of a baseline, but I was still, my anxiety manifest in like pure rage. I know mm -hmm. I seem like sweet and funny and everything else, but I am the worst. I have, I have quite the temper, especially when I'm anxious and sleep deprived. Um, so I'm just laughing uh, I'm that, here. <laughs> Yeah, same here, right? Just pure rage. I, I look very sweet and very nice and approachable, and I am, but not when I'm anxious, I will rip your head off. Um, so I kind of did that for a while, and 
the last couple of months, I've been like, I don't want to feel like this anymore. Like the pandemic hit and you and I were supposed to do this, you know, full time together. And I was just like, I am way too anxious to do a podcast about being anxious. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like that doesn't make any sense, but I could not physically get myself to be like not full blown, blown panic attack, like okay. thinking about doing these episodes. Like I would get so worked up about it and there's really no reason to, but anxiety. So the pandemic, you know, I'm stuck in the house with two little kids. My husband's still working a ton. Um, it, it, you know, it's very lonely and that does not help anxiety. And, you know, we don't get to go to the library for story time and we're not going to the parks and we're not having play dates. Like we are locked in Thunderdome, right. me and my two children, and somebody's gonna leave alive and everybody else is just out. So that's what <laughs> it felt like. Um, so I went and saw my PCP again and, you know, she, and I have hypothyroidism. So that tends, oh yeah, sorry. So that tends sorry, to no, no, um, nice. increase. Oh, that was you. So hypothyroidism tends to increase depression and anxiety symptoms as well. So I've had that since I was 17, not a big, big deal. But when that goes out of whack, um, that makes my anxiety worse. So, mm -hmm. and postpartum hormones will make it worse too. And my thyroid always goes out of whack when I'm uh, after I've had a baby. So, um, you know, it's, it's truly, if you see a tornado coming towards you, um, and you're like out of the way of that, but then you just stand there. Cause you're like, well, I gotta, I can't go anywhere. So then the tornado just hits you. And that's kind of what happens to me postpartum. It's a tornado of hormones and anxiety and, and all of that. So anyways, I went back and saw her and she's like, you know, the Zoloft sounds like it's taking the edge off, but, um, it sounds like, and, you know, I'm telling her how much I obsess about these little things. And she's like, you know, it, it sounds a lot like you're dealing with some OCD. And I was mm -hmm. like, girl, I know. Um, because don't we always say like, oh, it's my OCD. I'm sorry. But like legitimately it's my OCD. Right. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I um, started a second medication that's mostly to help with the OCD symptoms. And honestly, it's kind of, it does feel like a weight somewhat lifted off of my shoulders. So um, for me, it's, it's been medication that's helped a decent amount, a very supportive husband. God bless that man. Take a sip of your coffee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, it's been medication. I wish I could also get back into talk therapy, but there's just not, not the time for that right now, but love me some talk therapy. Mm, mm, that's like a cozy blanket. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but for, but for right now it's, you know, it's, it's medication mostly. And, and she said to me, she's like, look, it's, it's temporary. It's for right now. Like you've got two little kids you're locked in the house because of a global pandemic. It's winter. Um, it's the holidays. Woo. Mm -hmm. um, so it's temporary. She's like, well, you know, we'll reevaluate when we don't have to be locked down and the kids are a little bit older and, you know, you're able to exercise because exercise is a big thing that helps my anxiety and exercise is a big thing that also helps my husband's stress from work and stuff. And, um, you know, I, I see the importance in that. So mm -hmm. it's important for him to exercise. And honestly, I'm just trying to catch up on some sleep first and then I'll exercise. But, um, so, you know, it's doing some little things, but it's also seeing like the bigger picture, like, you know, you're not a failure for doing medication. You're not a failure for doing therapy. You're saying, this is where I am right now. This is what I need. And, and being okay with that need, um, and, and be, and being okay with like the dumpster fire that is life with little kids. Yeah. Cause it, a lot of days is just a dumpster fire. And some days it's a really cute dumpster fire, but it's still on fire and it's still a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think we're getting into a better, a better groove, a better space. Um, yeah, there's still days I completely lose my mind because I'm the mom. Um, and you know, we haven't had babysitters. I've tried to limit how much my parents come over because they're in an older age bracket. So, you know, I'm not, um, 
having them come over as much because I don't want to expose them just in case. But if I have to go to the doctors, I can't take the kids. So my mom has to come over. Um, So it's just, and there's all that anxiety worrying about that as well. So this is a really stressful time. Yeah. I feel like for moms in general, the being the scheduler Mm. and organizing three, four, however many children then added on that you have, it just leads to so much anxiety. And now with everything else is before I was like, okay, I can take, you know, I can take the baby along to this or now you, now you can't. So it's like, now you have Mm -hmm. to add another person's schedule. If it's a sitter, if it's a parent, if it's a whatever, and figuring that all out is, is just insane. And then also figuring out like, how safe are you being? Right. Uh, Especially for us, like, do you know what our exposure risk is and how safe are you being for me to allow you into my house? So, um, yeah, it's, and, and it's that mental, that mental load that moms Mm -hmm. have and every mom knows it. You've got to remember everyone's birthday, everyone's schedule, everyone's who needs what, when, who likes this snack, who's no longer eating this snack. My husband is out of clean underwear. I have to run, you know, even though my husband is very willing to do his own laundry, um, you know, my need to control too, you know, your anxiety says control all the things and you won't be anxious. No, that's not true. Um, It's about a sweet surrender, Um, (laughs) but that's hard to do, especially when you're, you're already anxious and you're like, your anxiety is like, Hey, if you just like over playing a little bit more, you're going to feel way better. And mm-hmm. it's all a lie. It's all and, a lie. And, and now here, it's like the sweet surrender is I can do it for like a day, maybe a couple days. And then it's just yeah. like, Oh, I can't take this. And that's what happened this weekend. We were texting before. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And like, <laughs> I said, Nope, we had, I, I did the target runs. I like ordered the stuff mm-hmm. online. I ordered like every single container last night Isaac said mm. thank god we don't live near a container store because that would be the end we just I do target. I do live by a container store oh, it's not super close thank god but mm. but like I was like this is getting organized I if yeah. you want me to have sanity this is what is happening this week I am getting rid of stuff like yeah yeah <laughs> there's been a lot of purging of old toys and organizing and there's a eight I yeah. have an ADHD husband which he's the only carrier because he gave it to me. (laughs) (laughs) The only carrier. Um, And I'm, and like six-year-olds, six-year-olds are always like that anyway, too. So yeah. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah. Right. So that surrender only lasts for like a day. (laughs) Yeah. And then it's back to the, back in the dumpster fire. (laughs) Right. Right. Oh, and this time of year is just so magical, Um, especially for the moms, especially for the moms. I know uh, my husband's off work today. So in my head, I'm like, here's all the things that have to get done. I have to create the menu for Christmas. I have to, everything needs wrapped. Nothing is wrapped. I don't even know what I have up in the hideaway spot. Um, Everything, every, I need to, I need to clean. I've got it like but you know what? I'm going to have another cup of coffee first. And, and if it gets done, it gets done. And if it doesn't, it'll eventually get done. Right. And I'm eventually going to get it done. You know, it's all going to go into a, into a bag and a right. little bit of tissue paper. And there you go. Merry I, Christmas. The, the hour before Hanukkah started, I had our <laughs> sitter that day, thankfully. And she went to pick up Ruben. I think I kept Eli. He was asleep. I don't know what happened, what it was, whatever. Yeah. She went down and was, well, I was walking back and I was like, okay, I'm quick going to wrap all of Ruben's gifts. And then I had to go do something else. Uh, and so Ruben and the sitter wrapped the other gifts because I was just oh, like, man. they're all getting done. I was like, I put them That's all perfect. on the table and they were very helpful. So that was nice. That's awesome. I wish I could. Um, yeah, it's not going to happen here. Um, and I can't rap with Sawyer because he is so like, let me see what you're doing. Oh, you have scissors. I'm going to take those scissors oh, yeah, and this yeah. tape. I'm going to roll all this tape out. Like that's well, we got the, the dog. 
<laughs> which you oh, know, yeah, we got a puppy child. and yes. um, that has been definitely that's yeah. set me off. Nick always says like no more live creatures in this house we've got two kids and us like no more nothing else alive that needs to be taken care of yes. for a very long time a yes. very long time yeah but I was trying to wrap <laughs> in the dog <laughs> Like, yeah, 11. he was. What are you taking, doing? What are you doing? Taking yeah. the wrapping paper and running around and ripping it, and uh, yeah, that yeah. kills you when you're like type A anxious. You're just yeah. like, Ugh. <laughs> I think, I think people that I don't understand that are just very like go with the flow, they'd be like, oh, that's funny, that's cute, and we're just like, ah. <laughs> you're going in a crate. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. That is what it yeah. is. Yeah. Oh man. Um, yeah, just amazing. It's all very magical and wonderful and special because a mom is out there doing it. That's right. That's why the holidays are special. (laughs) So thank your mother. Um, well, what else, what other wisdom do you want to? (laughs) No one wants to, you don't want to get me started. Um, (laughs) Uh, so then let me ask you the questions. What did you do for yourself today or this week? I washed my hair. That's true, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that does not happen all that often um, because by the end of the day, when I can actually get a shower, I'm way too tired. I'm like, eh, messy bun again tomorrow. Yep. So um, yeah, I put makeup on. Very nice. And I did my hair <laughs> and I, um, I also, um, because I'm getting over a cold that my daughter um, brought home, lovely little Petri dishes that our children are, Um, my husband, God bless that man, he um, has gotten up the last three mornings with, the last four mornings, because he had Friday off too, with the kids. And that means like our son's up at 4.30 in the morning. So my husband has gotten up and I have continued to sleep until like 8 a.m., Mm, that is wonderful when you get it like when you see an eight. <laughs> oh my god I'm like the day is gone I know 8 a.m is 8 a.m is early evening in this house um so that's been like that that's my triggers are sleep deprivation if I do not get sleep I can't I can't not be anxious if I'm not rested I'm anxious way more than I should be so being able to get a little bit of sleep, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a regular human being. I'm not just right. a giant ball of anxiety. Um, so or, the most important thing is sleep. Right. Absolutely. Or like rage too. Then that like, you just oh, see yeah. you can't flip that switch. Yeah. When I say anxiety, I mean, pure rage. <laughs> but I think that's Break important. Break everything, yell at everyone, right. rage. Mm-hmm. I think that's important because that's not only just people who have diagnosed anxiety, anything, it's just lack of sleep in general, which Mm -hmm. I want to say all new moms have, um, just sets you into your brain doesn't function properly. So no, yeah. I mean, they use sleep deprivation as torture techniques, right? So we're being tortured. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We could be captured by the enemy, whoever that may be right now, it's small children and, and tortured. And we'd be like, this is fine. Like I got a full two hours last night. Like, I don't know why you guys are thinking you're like going to break me, but like, I'm good. Right. (laughs) Um, So yeah, you've got, even if you have a baby that sleeps good, um, they don't really sleep good. Babies are not, are not good sleepers. They're not teenagers. They don't, you know, they don't stay up until 2 a.m. and then like sleep until like noon and they don't want to be bothered. Like they want to be bothered all the time. So sleep is such a big thing um, that I don't think at me as a new mom realized was such an important thing or became such a big thing for myself, my sleep or for my kids sleep. Um, you know, people always ask, Oh, how's the baby sleeping? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like a baby. Like, I don't know what my, I don't know what my litmus here is for, for baby sleep. But, um, and I will tell you even to this day, like hearing a mom say, Oh, my baby's such a good sleeper. And I just kind of set him down and he sleeps and it like rage bubbles up because 
I, I did not have that, but it might, it's a conversation for another time, but like, I don't know if it was my anxiety that made it so stressful for me because maybe she's just a chill mom. That's like, go with the flow. And like, just as like, Oh, it's fine. She may be also be younger and need less sleep. Um, I need a lot of, I need a lot of sleep in my old age. And, but they're babies. So you don't know, you don't know anybody else's perspective. So if they say, Oh, my baby sleeps good. They may sleep the same as your baby, but they just have more support. They have different tools. Lack of sleep doesn't bother them as much. They don't really like to sleep. I don't know who those people are. Um, if you're out there, like what's wrong with you, you should love to sleep. (laughs) Sleep is the most amazing thing in the whole wide world. If I could wrap it up and give it to myself as the present, I would. Um, yeah. So it's perspective too. So it's not just this blank. Does your baby sleep or doesn't your baby sleep? It's a whole host of things that goes into that. Um, but that's always the, that's always the question about, you know, babies, like, are they sleeping? I, are you sleeping? You're probably sleeping more than I am. Old lady in the grocery store, get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. shoot. Oh, so my. that's it. That's me. I can't wait to see what people are like, woo, that lady. And then just like <laughs> fire questions at me because I've got no filter. As my husband says, Fridays are filter free Friday, but it's Monday. <laughs> Every day is filter free in this house. So. I'm an open book. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you kind of said the, about the difference between uh, your first and second with, you know, having to take care of yourself. Is that what you would give your uh, like new mom advice? Is that the new mom advice you would give? Or is there anything else you would give to your advice? Why? Uh, yeah, I, it's hard, you know, because again, every person is different in their experience. If nothing, it's like, if you need something, want something, say it. It could be the most randomest thing, but ask you, I mean, the worst they can say is no, you know, like, remember okay. when I'm hungry, well, oh, for, you just completely got it. <laughs> sorry. Oh, for Pete's sake. Is it because this is, I'm, can you no, hear me now? Let me yeah, put both it, in. Um, it's like internet freezing. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the main thing would be advocate, say what you need, be on it, be direct. And there's no reason to feel bad about asking for anything like question what's going on. Um, yeah, just do, do what you need to do because all those people you're paying thousands of dollars, at, um, wherever you want to have it. You want to have it in, in your living room, do it. You want to, you want to a hole in your backyard, do it. You want to have it in the hospital, do it. Whatever you want to do, do it, but say what you need and, and be honest about it. Um, if you want ice chips, ask, if you want a grilled cheese, see if you can have it. I don't know. Ask. Um, whatever. If you want to, you know, stand up on the bed and yodel, ask, be like, can I can I stand up and yodel? I feel like it's really going to help me like this is baby. Like, um, and then after that, ask for help, have people help. And it, and it's not come over and hold this baby. It's come over and do those dishes, right. come over and maybe hold the baby for a second. And so I can go take a shower. Um, so I can on new pajamas because these pajamas I've been in for three days and I need new pajamas. Um, can you stop at Subway and get me a sandwich? And the answer should always be yes. And, and I think as moms, we don't ask, especially it's new chaotic. Um, if you want, if you want cookies from somewhere, say, Hey friend, um, that wants to come see this baby, bring a dozen cookies and you can come on in, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, that stuff, but it's almost like, and I know I still felt like I host people when they came to my house and my friends that were seasoned mom were like, no, sit down. Um, I'm going to get you a drink instead of you getting me. And I think it's a time to be very selfish. And that's hard for moms because moms are not self-built giving, giving, giving 
people need other people. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? And when you're an anxious mom, it's what do you need? But you have to realize in that, in that stage of giving birth and then having a new baby, it should be about what the mom needs so that the mom care baby. It's about putting your oxygen mask on first. If that plane's going down, right. And that's the newborn stage. The plane is crashing. I don't care how good your newborn is. The plane's crashing. They're going to tell you, put on your oxygen mask first before you put on anybody else's. So make sure that your oxygen mask is getting put on first. That's on. Everything else goes so much smoother, so much better. And it's amazing. Blows your mind when you start to see like, if I sit down and eat and the baby fusses for a little bit, it's okay. Once I pick the baby up, I now have nourishment and I'm good to go. Like, let's do it. Or if I get some sleep, perfect. So you have to, you just have to be selfish time that real is not calling for you to be right. You know, about yourself, but you have to be, you have to be else is going to do that for you. And that's, that's hard. Be aware of it. So if nothing else, while you're in that three month age or the stage you are and you're feeling like you're drowning realize that you need to step back and be a little bit selfish and say like you guys are good for a minute like what do what do I need and it's so hard for moms to do it and it's still hard for me to do because even you know me sleeping I wake up and I I come down at 8 a.m and I'm like oh my god I'm so sorry like, don't apologize for that. You leap. I haven't slept in two years. Like I, I need that sleep. There's, there's nothing wrong with what you need because you're aware of what everybody else needs, but you're like, Oh no, I don't need anything. The heck you don't. The heck you don't. (laughs) That's it. I'm done. I'm out. Throw these off. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Um, so the internet, you keep coming up as red, but then it was super glitchy. So I'm going to go. And when it, when I go back through, I will yeah. put some key points in there. If it doesn't come across, like, I hope it came across. Do you think it's my internet. Yeah. It's showing up on here. Like I'm seeing like yellow and red bars on your end, but damn it. Yeah. It's probably but, down in the basement. So I'm away from the router, but, um, and it's midday. What's that? Matter? I, cause it's well, because where we're in, in Robinson, there's, it's so many, um, businesses and the airport is three minutes from our house. Oh, wow. so all of, all of that traffic, it always is shitty during the day god no I was like what does midday have to do it's like everybody's on their lunch hour. <laughs> you don't know about midday I don't I don't I do uh, not shoot. all right let me know if it no <laughs> it'll be work cool. oh okay yeah but um Sorry. no that's nothing um so I don't know how to end this bye (laughs) like so all right we could sit and talk for hours I know about everything Mm -hmm. so I think we need to we I'm gonna go through and get some key points that we will have other episodes with you on about (laughs) oh and then we'll have some more exciting Um, okay that sounds great thank you so much Carrie's corner come on in we're all anxious (laughs) You and these, you, and also I have to say that you are the yeah. name inspiration for this. <laughs> oh, I was yeah. like, oh, I love it. It's so catchy. And I was like, that's because of Carrie. That like, makes me so happy. Credit for that. Um, yeah. But yes. So you'll, I love it. you'll be back. I'll force you to be back. Even if you don't want to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, drive on out here and force me. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <coughs> oh boy you okay oh, but yeah no it's bronchitis it's fine yeah um okay 
Well, well, I'm just going to disappear. I'll somehow end the show. Yeah. And it'll be fine. But um, yeah, I think we could talk about so much more. Thank you so much. Yeah. I will love to come back anytime. And hopefully my internet isn't as glitchy. Oh, I'm sure. Now it's time to get, now it's time to get everybody lunch. I know it is lunchtime. No, sorry. Because the fun don't stop when you're the mom. No, it never really stops when you're the mom. End it like that. That is, I will. <laughs> well, I, I will forget I can never stop recording with you. I know, I know. I'm sorry. It's it's my fault. I won't stop talking. So <laughs> stop apologizing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um <laughs> Okay. <coughs> I do want to say though that I you mentioned about the medication for having an epidural yeah. with Sawyer and mm-hmm. mine was completely different because I I oh. did not have an epidural with Ruben. I had they gave me some type of medication, I don't know. Um mm. and literally it knocked me unconscious. Knocked me unconscious. Oh. So, but that first moment then when Ruben was born, it was like that, oh, this amazing. And I like, I feel looking back and it might just be looking back because of all, like how the first year was anxiety wise with Eli, but looking yeah. back and going, I didn't feel connected. Like there, I was just yeah. like, who's this? Yeah. You know that. Yeah. So you were talking about birth order. So we had the, we had the, yeah. Reverse, so. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It's interesting. I'd, I'd be interested to see kind of what other moms say right. too about, you know, how the connection with their kids. And I don't think moms even want to talk about that because you're supposed to just be instantly connected and in love with everybody. And that's not always the case. And that's okay. Right. I love, I love the crap out of my kids, both of them. They're the best little people in the entire world. Um, and, you know, you just need to be honest about how things went down because things go down. Um, yeah, that'd be interesting to see what other moms have to say about how their experiences were birth order versus medicated Maybe, versus yeah. and connect. Pl- yeah. If you, yeah, if you it yeah. followed the, the birth plan you had, or if you had them at home or you had them at the hospital and how that impacted all of that, that's, yeah, yeah that'd be interesting to see. I'd be interesting to, to hear about what moms have to say about that. All right. So moms call in about that. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to hear that. I'd love their, their take on that. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to put this one out on Thursday. Oh, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, that's exciting. Nerve makes me nervous. Why Why are you nervous? I mean, it's just who I am as a person. Really? (laughs) because I hate the sound of my voice well you don't have to listen to it again I guess I guess all right Tori it's gonna be all right you don't have to listen (laughs) and the whole time I just sound like no you don't no no, okay you don't okay um yeah okay well that's exciting yes I will um you promote if you feel so I will yes I will and I'll send you stuff and okay we've yet to make a profit so whenever that happens you'll get your your take on that so (laughs) only on the merch because I came up with the name just on the merch (laughs) (laughs) well so promote promote the merch I will promote the merch I have my stickers but like I've looked completely disheveled for the last there's like take a merch because like I look awful but maybe today I'll take a picture with the merch so I can start promoting the the episode I have yeah and I haven't um I did the merch stuff like once and I haven't really focused on it so yeah when I do and when I when I got my mugs um yeah it allowed me to put in different addresses and then they all got sent to me. Yeah. So you didn't get yours, oh, but that's okay. Whenever I, do I got my again. stickers and I got my shirt. So I'm good. Yeah. 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 
Alrighty. All right. Let me know when, when you want to have me on again, and then we'll try and plan it. And then that won't happen. And then we'll try and plan it a couple more times and then that won't happen. And then, and then we'll do it. Okay. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> Oh boy. All right. I'm going to go try and feed these kids, wrap some presents, wash all the dishes in the sink and, um, yeah, do all the things. Sounds fine. Per usual. You know how it is. Bye. All right, lady. See you.